So the profit of a company is maximized when the marginal revenue equals to the uh, marginal cost. And uh, in the problem that we have marginal revenue uh, equals to 150 minus 10Q, where the Q here is the quantity of units produced. And uh, the marginal cost is a slightly more complex. It's 3Q squared minus 20Q and plus 73. And now uh, we are going to solve for this equation because the criteria of maximizing the profit is when the marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost. So we need to find uh, a value or the values of Q because this is the order of two. Um, and uh, now I'm going to show you how to solve this by hand and how to solve that using the uh, financial calculator from the, the BA2 plus from Texas Instrument. So first solving by hand, and it's pretty simple. 150 minus 10Q equals to 3Q squared minus 20Q plus 73. We can rearrange this pretty easily by moving uh, everything from the left uh, to the right hand side or the vice versa. And we have 3Q squared minus, see here is minus 20, here is minus 10. When you move from the left to the right, you change the sign of the negative 10 to be positive 10. So minus 20 plus 10 give you minus 20. And the same thing for the constant here. Uh, okay. So uh, you can use the formula that you learned from maybe the seventh grade, but uh, you can also um, if you can see this, right, you can uh, rearrange this to be right and you can you can tell the only um, positive solution to this equation is q equals to seven right so in this case i'm pretty lucky because uh, this uh, equation is pretty easy uh, to solve and i can notice kind of how to how to rearrange that or reformat that to find a, a pretty simple integer solution. But what if um, you're really nervous during the test and uh, of course you should use uh, a calculator, right? So now I'm going to show you um, how to solve this equation using the BA2 plus Texas Instrument Calculator. And uh, uh, actually first, before we use the calculator, um, Let's see how we're going to use it, right? So, um, actually, the calculator does not have a straightforward built-in um, kind of a solver to solve polynomial functions like uh, the other fancy calculators that you use in college. Um, but um, lots of the problems that we deal with in finance are um, kind of a polynomials where if you rearrange this, uh, you can see that you have a constant, right? And you have a variable that has the order of one, and you have the variable that has order of two, and even you have uh, like uh, another variable of uh, the order of three or four or even more, um, kind of you can see this as a cash flow problem, right? So if, if we replace Q into another format, and rearrange the items that might be more straightforward to you. Like we can change this to be minus 77, right? That's the constant here. Minus 10. Instead of writing Q, we will replace Q by this term, right? This must sound really familiar to you. And it will look like this plus 3. 1 plus r squared equals to 0. Now we have a cash flow problem, right? The initial payment is negative 77, and the first payment is um, 10, and the second payment is 3, and or you can rearrange it, and then you can 
um, kind of multiply that. But I'm going to show you how we can solve this using a calculator. Um, and if you push the buttons faster than you're writing, you can probably solve this in a much more reliable way, right? So let's, uh, let's take a look. So the first number we're going to enter into the calculator is negative 77. The second number is negative 10. And the third number is 3. And that will give us the R, the value of R. And by using R, we can calculate the Q. So hopefully this is not too complex. Let's give it a try. This is our calculator, right? And we turn that on. So first, just to be fair, I want to make sure I'm, I, I reset my calculator and have all kinds of um, stuff on it. And just to, uh, it's reset and it's cleared to zero, right? So let's go to this cash flow. You see this cash flow worksheet. And uh, let's see, can I, can I see my numbers here? Okay, here we go. Let's move it up. A little bit okay so now first let's enter our first payment which is cash flow zero it's 77 right and just to be consistent we will follow the same sign as our equation here and let me change the sign to it to be negative 77 I push enter and now you see this is stored in the memory and I click next which is the first cash payment, right? So I now it's 10, let's enter that, right? And actually I made a mistake, right? It's pretty easy to make a mistake by using a calculator instead of a computer. Um, so let me retry that, 10, change the sign to be negative, right? And hit enter. And uh, the frequency is one, right? We only have one period. Um, and what I'm going to do next is to go to the th second cash flow payment or the um, actually the last one. Let's enter into three. It's a positive number. Let's just hit enter. And now we have entered all the um, kind of uh, cash flows for the future payments. And let's solve for this internal rate of return. Uh, we hit IRR, right? And I hit compute. So hit IRR first and hit compute and uh, the calculator is computing so now I give you this number of the internal rate of return is negative 85 right so first is uh, in the financial calculator um, the IRR the unit of measurement is always in percentage so in this case our R right so that's uh, so hopefully everyone can memorize the IRR is negative 85.7, right? Let's go here. The R equals to negative 85.71, and it's percentage, right? So now let's solve for Q equals to 1 plus R equals 1 divided by 1 minus. Let's change the sign from percentage to be decimal. And then we're going to end up with 8571, right? And right now I'm trying um, to making sure I don't switch between calculators and the paper too often. Uh, let's try to see if I can solve this. It's 1, 4, 3, 9, some, oh, 2, 9 something, right? It started feeding already. And uh, um, by calculating this, roughly it's of a seven right and uh, I know you don't trust him I know you don't trust me I, I don't trust myself either let's see right so let's try to divide this by 100 now we got the percentage right and we plus one and we take the reciprocal right and we got a seven right so seven seven and this is pretty much how you use a um, kind of a financial calculator to solve for uh, this uh, second order polynomials. And if that's a third order, if that's a, um, a fourth order, I don't think it will be that hard for a CFE test. But here you go. Yep.
Good luck to your test.